Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Working Out with Bobby Z. It's a Wiggy Weavy Wednesday and a tutorial, so woo, yeah. I tried to make my camera a little higher so that you're not really seeing my ceiling fan and my lights and everything, and it's more focused on me and what I'm doing, so I hope this works today. If not, um, I'll lower it a little bit, but I put it up really high today, and I actually like it because I feel like I'm actually looking straight into the camera and the screen instead of looking down. So today's tutorial is going to be how to steam out janky synthetic hair. I get this question a lot, um, so I figured, hey, I have to steam this out for a project anyway, so why not make a demo? So as you can see, this wig is really jank. Um, it isn't even a full wig, this is just a fall. So it's just a three quarter wig, so it only comes to here. Um, but I'm putting it on the back of um, my black lace front. So I'm putting this on the back and styling it like 1890s actually. So that's gonna be interesting with a fall. <laughs> um, but as you can see, it's you know kind of fried and crispy and the top of it's kind of weird and the bottom's like super curly. That's because I used this for a show and I hot rollered it and steamed it because I had to do it in like 20 minutes and have time to wet set it and wait for it to dry. So the ends are a little crispy and fried, but that's perfect for today's tutorial. So this is what she looks like to start. And when I'm done, she's gonna look like silk girl. So let's get started. Okay, so to steam out a wig the way that I do it, you're gonna need your wig and you're gonna need a head. If you're just steaming it out to straight, you can do it on a styrofoam head, but if you're gonna set it, buy a canvas head, please. I say this all the time. I hate seeing people on Instagram and YouTube calling themselves wig makers and they're doing stuff on a styrofoam head. Like, no, you're not a wig maker. You're cutting and pasting on a wig cap on a head. Buy a canvas head, buy several of them in any size you want, whatever. Buy them, they're an investment. They will last forever. You can write it off on your taxes. Do it. You're also gonna need big clips of some sort. These are the crocodile clips that I talked about in my favorite things video. I really like them. I use them on everything. Um, you're gonna need, if you have these big guys, you're gonna need two or three. If you have little clips, you're gonna need like a dozen. You're gonna need a lot because you have to put it up in sections and all of that. You can use a tail comb or you can use a, sh a regular barber type comb. I like a tail comb because I find that they have very fine teeth. And also I like to use, um, one of my comb air teasing combs as well just because it has those serrated teeth in it that's going to help you get your hair super super straight you're also going to need a wig brush and you're going to need a boar bristle round brush um i find that boar bristle flat brushes are too soft for you to do this with so i like to use the boar bristle round brush sometimes i use it sometimes i don't but it's good to have one just in case a water spray bottle filled with water, unlike this one, which is empty. Oil sheen of some sort. Like I've said before, I love and swear by finishing. I think it's amazing. It's the best. Um, I find I've used a whole bunch of different kind of oil sheens. I find the finishing is the best. If you don't have finishing, Motions is really good. It's um, around the same price, like four or five bucks a bottle. Motions is good. Don't use anything that's that green olive oil brand. I used that once on a wig and it took me three years of washing that wig at least eight or nine times for it to finally actually come out and for the wig to actually look the same as it did before. It puts a weird coating on it. It makes it heavy, makes it sticky, changes the color. Don't use it. Use something light like a finishing or a motions. You're also going to need a wig stand of some sort and a steamer. Also make sure when you start that your steamer is full. This is a steamer I just got at Best Buy um, maybe two years ago. It's pretty good. You can also get the small handheld craft type ones. Those are fine too. I find that these hold water longer because they can hold water for up to an hour, whereas the little ones only hold water for about 15 minutes. So if you're doing something very thick or very long, you're going to have to fill it up like two or three times. So mine has a little detachable tank like this. Mine has 45 minutes as a max, but some of the bigger industrial ones can go for hours, like it's crazy. You also should have a towel to cover the floor um, so that you don't get a big puddle of water on the floor. I'm gonna put the head on the stand. Next, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to brush it out and detangle it while it's dry. This has already been washed if you're gonna if you want to wash and reset something, depending on how bad it is, sometimes if it's really, 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 really bad and tangled, I'll steam it out before I wash it and then touch it up after I wash it 
But this one wasn't so crazy. I washed her yesterday and now she's dry. So now I'm going to be able to brush through her very easily. Another quick thing about brushing is if you look at the way the wig, the, brus the bristles on a wig brush go, they line up this way. But if you hold it that way, they don't. So if you brush through this way because the bristles line up, it detangles faster. If you brush this way, you know, it still detangles, but this way you can rake right through that hair. Pay particular attention to the underneath hair because that's what lays against your neck. That's what's going to get the most tangled of any part of the wig is going to be the nape of the neck, especially if it's long and if, if you're wearing it down. Okay, so now that your wig or your piece or whatever is fully brushed out, you want to separate it into sections. So I like to usually do four or five sections just so that it's easier for me and I don't have to deal with all of the hair. So usually what I do is I section out the crown part. Um, if this was a skin top wig, this would be where the skin top would be. I'd section all of that hair out. And usually I will just twirl it and then I put a clip to hold it in place. Then I usually will do either side, but considering this is a fall, it doesn't really have a side panel like a traditional wig does. So I'm just gonna go ear to ear across the back. And like I've said in my other videos, I like to use a, the wefting as a guide. So I make sure that my sections are nice and clean and even. Especially when you're steaming, you wanna make sure that the sections of the wig are nice and even so that you're not gonna be steaming this out with some hair from up here. I just, you know, it's cleaner, looks nicer. I find that it goes faster. If you take nice clean sections, it's a lot easier. So I'm gonna clip all this up as well. So there's a clip there, ta-da. And then I have the bottom portion, which I usually would just do all this as one big piece, but since I'm trying to teach you guys how to do it, I'm gonna split it in half. Um, you know, once you get more accustomed to steaming and once you figure out how you do it and what you do best with it and how you do it easiest, this is just a tutorial just to show you guys how I do it. Am I saying that I'm right? No. Am I saying that I'm perfect at this? No. But this is what works for me. You figure out what goes best for you, what works best for you, what gives you the best result every single time. So with steaming, this is what I do. Now, so the steamer's heating up. I'm going to wet down my hair. Now I like to steam, if I'm going to completely re-steam something like completely bone straight from a frizzy mess, I like to do it wet. If I'm just going to steam something a little bit just to knock a curl out of it before I reset it, nothing too crazy, I usually will do that dry. But since I want this to be nice and smooth and gorgeous and clean again, I'm going to steam it straight, straight. So you can hear my steamer is boiling right now. I'm going to spray that section down with oil sheen again. And then also oil, I find the oil sheen lubricates the hair so it's not as prone to stretch and it's not as prone to tangle when you use the oil sheen. So my steamer is going, as you can see here, and it's getting caught on my chair, so my steamer is going. So what I like to do is I like to just put my steamer right close against the hair. As you can see, I'm not touching it. I'm about two inches away right now. So I'm just heating up that hair, and then you just want to brush through it gently. You want to heat up that hair, and you want to brush through it gently. So basically, synthetic hair is plastic. So the reason why most people think you can't curl or straighten synthetic hair is because you can't use conventional methods such as a curling iron or a blow dryer or stuff like that. However, as we all know, plastic has a melting point. So basically, when you're doing synthetic hair, you want to get it hot enough so that it will change its, its shape and go straight, or if it's in a roller, you want to get it hot enough so that it'll take that round shape, but you don't want to get it too hot to the point where it'll crisp or fry, so there's always a fine line. So as you can see, this hair is already straightening out right here at the root. So then usually what I'll do is I usually will comb it really smooth, and if you have a plastic steamer like I have, this is perfect. You, if you have a metal steamer, do not do this. I repeat, if your steamer has a metal head on it, do not do this. You will fry your wig in three seconds and it will destroy it. So what I do is I comb that hair bone straight and I pass the hair directly on it very quickly like a flat iron. 
So as you can see, I'm putting it right up against it and pulling it down very quickly. That's how I can get my hair super, super pinned straight quickly. So now you can see the ends are still curly and the top of it's straight. So next what I do is I put my brush underneath, put the steamer on top, and I drag it down. So you can see my, um, my stand's coming along with me for the ride. So then just put my foot on the stand and it'll hold it in place. And you just want to do that same thing over and over again putting the steamer under the hair, putting the brush through it, and pulling it straight. And eventually you will get tangles at the ends. That's what happens because, you know, synthetic hair does like to tangle like any kind of hair. So once you get to that point, you kind of just want to pull the brush through it gently. And then eventually you will steam out all of those kinks. You will steam out all of those fried bits by doing this. I also like to do it on top and roll it down like that, almost like a blowout. I, um, Since I do work at Dry Bar Blowout Salon, I do know a lot about blowing out hair. And I find that using the same kind of methods and tricks with um, di direction and stuff like that when I'm steaming out hair helps a lot. So as you can see, I'm not just holding the steamer and steaming it out. I'm brushing the hair out and steaming it. I'm brushing the hair sideways and I'm steaming it. I'm brushing the hair from the top and I'm steaming it. So that's how you're gonna get it straight. You can see that's pretty much bone straight right now. There's a little bit of a wave still in there in some pieces, but when I'm all done, I steam the whole thing again all together, so it's usually good. So now you wanna take your boar bristle round brush. Like I said, sometimes I skip this step, sometimes I don't. Today I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. So you're just gonna roll that, you're gonna put the brush into the hair like that, and you're gonna to wanna to roll it towards the wig to catch that hair. See how I put it in and then I roll it and it catches and then you want to do the same thing and you just want to steam it out. It's also important that when you're doing this that you need to block your wig down so tight on that head because if you just put two pins in it it's you're gonna be pulling and stretching and that thing's gonna fly right off. So you want to make sure you have the wig on there very very tightly and securely. And this, I find, is how you get that hair bone, bone straight with a steamer. And also you can do this if you're trying to get a bump back in the end of a wig. You can do that same thing. Since this is going to be straight and I'm going to set it again, I'm just going straight. But if you wanted to put a bump in the bottom of the wig, you just take your section and you just roll and heat up the ends with... The steamer, you take the steamer, put it away, and you continue to roll the ends until they're cool, and then when you let them fall, it'll pop underneath. That's great for bangs on the front of a wig. If your wig's like a 60s thing and it has a spit curl, same principle applies. So now I'm going to take down the next section, and I'm going to do the same thing. Get it wet, douse it down, get my oil sheen up in there. And if your wig isn't completely soaking wet, that's fine. Since steam is water, it'll be fine. So again, hold it tight, wave steamer over it. <clears throat> My voice is going for some reason, I'm not sure why. So now I'm starting to pass it <clears throat> directly over the hair. This wig is also a good example of how to steam out different types of curls. Since the bottom of this wig is a tighter curl than the top, you guys are going to see how much easier this is going to steam out than this. So I just did my usual and I sped this up so you guys didn't have to sit and watch me steam this girl out for 20 minutes. Um, as you can see, I just keep going through with my fine tooth comb, with my boar bristle brush, and with my wig brush to get her nice, smooth, and straight. Like I said before, use any combination that you think will work for you. Additionally, as you can see here, once I start steaming out the front bits, I'm steaming it off the face, just so that when I finally go to set it or style it, it's not going to be prone to fall into the face because it's steamed going back. Okay, now I'm in the top. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna spray it down again like I always have really douse it, get it good and wet. I 
I'm gonna oil sheen it as well. I like to pick the hair up because I find that you can get it on all the layers of hair if you do that versus just on top. So the top and the front, you need to tighten this, it's loose. The top and the front, I do a little differently than I do the back. And you know, the, the key with steaming out synthetic hair is moving quickly. If you let the steamer sit too long, even if it's for two or three seconds, sometimes you can singe the hair. You can crisp it just in a little spot. You can get that out with a round brush and really working it quickly with a round brush or with um, your teasing comb as well. But if you move quickly, usually you'll avoid that catastrophe. Now that I'm in the top and the sides, I actually do the reverse and I start on the bottom and you'll see why in a moment. So I'm starting here on the bottom and I'm just putting the, the, the steamer gently against the hair just like that very quickly. You can see how quickly I do this. And basically that's just gonna quickly steam out that hair and it's quickly gonna get it straight. So then what I do once I get into the top is the ends are now pretty straight. I like to heat it up and then brush it like I did before, heat it up brush it but then what I do to get it nice and stick straight and smooth or if you have a lot of teas you had a lot of teasing and that hair is like pfft, on top this is the best way to get rid of it quick put it and pull it down really quick and I just put it on the scalp of the wig pull it down really quick and that's what I do and it's just you know that's how I get I can get a synthetic wig super 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 flat is by putting the steamer right on top and then brushing it smooth immediately following if you just put the, the steamer up against it and you don't brush it right afterwards, it has more chance to tangle. It has a better chance of frying if you just do that. So that's why if you notice, I'm always following my brush after my steamer. I continue to do that until the top portions of the wig are straight and fully smooth. I then put my brush underneath at the nape and work from behind as I continue to straighten it just on the ends. Now that my wig is almost completely straight, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back through with my teasing comb just on the ends and get those really good. Because the, the teasing comb has the serrated teeth, it's gonna be pulling that hair nice and tight for you and you'll get it bone straight in no time. But like I said, if you're just gonna, if you're just resetting it and it's not super fried on the ends, you can skip this step. Or if it's going into an updo, you can skip this step because the best wigs that go into updos are wigs that you've had that you've steamed out and reset three or four times because they get a little fried on the ends and fried through the shaft and they will easily go up into an updo. That's why you see a lot of these queens wear the same wig multiple times down and then as they start to wear it, it gets bigger and bigger and then all of a sudden, whoop, they put it in an updo. And that's because you can't, I mean, you can put a new wig in an updo, but it's a lot easier and a lot sturdier to do an updo on something that's old and a little fried. Okay. So here she is all done. Um, she is still a little wet, but you can see that she is straight and she's moving and I can run my hand through it like butter. So yeah, that's how you guys steam out a wig and whip yourself in the face with the wet hair and get it all over your glasses. So <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. I've gotten asked about it a lot, especially recently on Instagram. Everyone's asking me how I do my wigs. So I figured that I would start with how to get them straight from nappy and then we'd go on from there. So thank you guys again for watching. I really appreciate it. All the love and the reaching out you guys are all doing. It's amazing. I love it. I, 
I adore you all so much. Thank you so much for all of that. Be sure to follow me and subscribe and all of those fun things down in the box, all the social network stuff. And if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, anything you want to see in a future video, if you have any questions about my wigs that I sell, about custom work, anything like that, my email is also down in the box. So feel free to email me. Don't be afraid. I always reply. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.